My name is Professor Mary Scholes and I work at Wits University as the Director of Postgraduate Studies and I also have a professorship in the School of Animal, Plant and Environmental Sciences. Many people say to us, please ask this question, please ask that question, can you answer other questions? And we've been asked those questions so frequently we felt it was very important to just write a book that people would understand the simple answers to their questions. And we've managed to put together the most frequently asked 55 questions. We find that lay people are particularly interested in what is really happening in climate change and how it's going to affect them. So we talk about the educated layman and that means anybody from having probably a grade 8 education all the way through to university professors and researchers because we've written it in a way that you only need to read the section that you're interested in. You don't have to read it from the beginning to the end and you can pick it up and put it down when you want to. So what is happening with climate change is that people usually think it's just an increase in temperatures and a change in rainfall. But there are many other impacts and they can be social impacts on humans, but they can also be impacts on water and rivers and our marine systems, our oceans and on the terrestrial environment. So the key differences in the terrestrial environments that we'll see into the future is that our big herbivores, like elephants and rhinos and buffalo, they may move to different areas if they can't find sufficient grazing. And we know it's quite difficult for them to move. But other organisms like birds and insects, they can move very easily. And I think that most of you will have recognized already that you're getting birds in your garden that were not there five years ago. And, uh, so it's those kinds of terrestrial changes. And then in the oceans, we will see a big difference in the acidity of the water. And as it gets more acid, it will damage our coral reefs. And it will also impact where the fishing grounds are, where the sardines are and where the pilchards are, as well as the penguins, who unfortunately will decrease in number quite dramatically. So the association of climate change and rainfall is not very predictable at the moment because there are a number of other factors that control rainfall distribution. But we do know that in most cases in southern Africa we will get more droughts, so the frequency of droughts will increase. What that means is, is that for cropping agriculture, for example, those crops that are absolutely dependent on rainfall and no irrigation, they are going to be severely impacted. So we will see some rainfall distributions changing. However, the Cape areas will continue to stay winter rainfall areas. The high felt areas will continue to see summer rainfall. But when the rains start and when the rains end, will probably change. We will experience always into the future what we call a mid-season drought. So the rains may start in October and then they will go away for months and come back again perhaps in March. And at the same time then we get an increase in temperature. So when you get an increase in temperature it causes the air movement across the southern part of the continent to be quite different. And that's why we get these very terrific thunderstorms with lightning at three o'clock in the morning and hail at four o'clock in the morning, kinds of weather patterns we're not used to in South Africa. We are certainly seeing the impacts of climate change already. The particular phenomenon that's causing what we're currently seeing is a phenomenon called the El Nino. Now, El Nino is a meteorological phenomenon. It's got to do with the warming of the surface ocean of the Pacific. And in the old days, that's 30, 40, 60 years ago, we used to think we understood 
how El Nino worked and we were able to model it with predictions as it will be strong in certain years, weaker in other years, and therefore if there's a strong El Nino, we can always predict that there will be a drought the following season. However, the strength of that El Nino has changed completely and we don't really understand why and at the moment it's particularly strong and that is why we're having these drought periods. So there will be some very short-term impacts of food security in the country. What people tend to forget is that you can think of food security at least at three different levels. You can think as a nation, will South Africa be food secure? Or for example, will Gauteng be food secure? Or you would say, are the people, the poor people in Gauteng food secure? And that's what we often refer to as household security. And it's very difficult for any government or any municipality to plan on making sure that every household feels it has access to the right nutritional quality of food and the right amount. And I think what we will see into the next six months at least is a shortage of some food types and that goes across the economic sector. There will be some very special lettuces, for example, that people won't be able to get any longer. But there will also be shortages of things like spinach and cabbage. So it will really affect all peoples. And if the water shortage continues, then we can expect there to be increased food insecurity. And then in many cases, we have to rely on NGOs and interfaith groups to help people that are really vulnerable. The people that will be essentially more physically affected are those that don't have access to the foods that they need in amount and in nutritional quality. Many of those people also live in vulnerable areas. So the places where they live are often prone to droughts and floods and their homes are not very secure. So if a strong wind comes through and they lose the roof, then unfortunately they lose all their safety and security. So there will be the vulnerable poor people who will feel it the most. But it's interesting that many of the people who are even in a middle income category are starting to feel that their emotional comfort and their security is starting to be channel challenged because they are used to behaving in certain ways. And now if they can't quickly pop into the store and get the food they want, or there's a massive thunderstorm and they can't get home in the time they want, they are also starting to suffer.